Welcome, friends. To this time, we devote to be together on Wednesday evening for reflection and for prayer. Tonight, I am coming to you from one of the classrooms in our Emmanuel Preschool. Sometimes I find it hard to believe that our preschool has been in existence now for more than 25 years. It seems not that long ago that Nancy Cothran was our children's minister here, and Lee McClure joined Emmanuel with a vision of opening a preschool, and together they began to dream of the Emmanuel Preschool. They presented their dream to the church in business meeting, and we voted to give them $5,000 to open the Emmanuel Preschool. And that is exactly what they did. They dreamed, they envisioned, they put together a plan, and they implemented, and they opened our school to their first class. Over the years, scores and scores of children have come through the Emmanuel Preschool. Each child that has come here has been received as a wonderful and unique creation of God, a gift to us and to all the world. And it has been our joy to watch that child discover themselves and their world through learning, through play, through music, through art, through countless things they do at the Emmanuel Preschool. It's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. Today, Dana Price is our preschool director, and she keeps the vision going. She has a wonderful group of teachers, Miss Tanya, Miss Leslie, Miss Millie, Miss Melinda, Miss Amber, Miss Casey, and Miss Anya. They welcome children, they celebrate children, they play with children, and yes, they teach them and prepare them to go on to elementary school. Sometimes in the past year with the pandemic, I thought my job was challenging, but my job has not been nearly as challenging as the one that Dana Price faced in preparing to open our school in the midst of a pandemic. There were guidelines from the state. Our classrooms had to be modified. The number of children we could receive had to be reduced. All kinds of things were kind of turned upside down. But Dana and her teachers negotiated all those changes and they've welcomed children. Sometimes our schedules had to be interrupted because the COVID cases in our region were up and schools had to stop having in-person learning. Yet, Day in and day out, when they have been able to be here, they have been extraordinary teachers, using all their creativity and passion to engage children. This has not only been a challenging year for the Emanuel Preschool, but for all schools and all teachers and all children and all students. This has been a long, long journey of children and students learning virtually at home, with parents having to master new technologies and engage teachers in new ways as, as they tried to assist their children learning at home. And teachers, who can imagine what they have been through to develop new teaching plans, to master this technology that beamed them into their children's homes? and then to engage them in learning and to encourage them to learn when the children were scattered far beyond their classrooms. Yet one thing we've learned in the past year is that children and students and families are amazingly resilient. They have made their way through this time. Yes, there have been ups and downs and twists and turns, but they have endured. They have persevered. And yes, Teaching has continued, and children are learning, and the world continues to go around each day. Tonight, 
aware of the challenges that children and students and families and teachers and educators are facing today. I thought it would be good to devote this time to praying for children, praying for teachers, praying for folks who help and guide and sustain families. So tonight, I've chosen a passage of scripture from Luke's Gospel, 16th chapter, the 18th chapter and the 16th verse. This passage of scripture comes from an event in the life of Jesus when mothers and fathers were bringing their children to Jesus that he might bless them. Now, the disciples thought that um, Jesus didn't have time for children that he was much too busy with more serious things to take children into his arms. But that was not Jesus' attitude at all. And so, in this passage, which now appears on your screen, we may read Jesus' response. Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Tonight, we will pray for children, for students, for teachers, for everyone who commits themselves to caring for children and for students. Teachers, leaders, People who care for children, students, are become significant in their lives. They pass along much more than the subject matter that they teach. They give so much more of themselves than what happens in the classroom or what beams out into a child or student's home. They are, I think, in this time, inspirational as they creatively go about what they are doing teachers in preschools, in elementary schools, in middle schools, and high schools are doing a phenomenal job in a very challenging time. And children and students are rolling with the punches. They're hanging in there. They're doing the best that they can with the support of their families and others. And for that tonight, we will also give thanks. So, let us take this time now to pray for children, students, teachers, educators, for everyone who invests themselves in the lives of our children, who embrace children and students as gifts from God. Now, let us bow our heads and let us pray together. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for children all across our world, children with families, children in orphanages and, orphanages and institutions, and children alone. Lord Jesus, we pray for families and children living through this season of the pandemic with all its challenges. Lord Jesus, we pray for students who are trying to keep up with their studies when they are no longer able to go to school each day as they once did. Lord Jesus, we pray for families who are struggling to support their children who are learning at home.
Lord Jesus, we thank you for teachers who are doing everything in their power with amazing creativity to encourage their students who are scattered far beyond their classrooms. Lord Jesus, we pray for those homes where learning is even more challenging because of food insecurity, lack of technology, and the threat of eviction. Lord Jesus, we pray for children and students who feel isolated and alone. Lord Jesus, we pray for teachers who are committed to teaching even when they may feel isolated and alone, helpless and weary. Lord Jesus, impress upon us that all children are your gift to our world, and they may be the key to a future filled with hope and peace. Lord Jesus, we pray tonight for children, for families, and for everyone committed to caring for children, teaching students, and supporting families. We place our children in your hands. We ask you to shield them from difficulties. We trust you will give them strength and wisdom when facing challenging situations. We ask you to watch over them, to keep them from harm, to pick them up when they fall, to console them when they hurt, to comfort them when they lose, and to send caring people into their lives when they suffer. We ask you to sustain families with your love, to strengthen and inspire teachers and others who are devoted to children, and to create safe places where children are received with joy, encouraged, and blessed. Lord Jesus, as you welcome children into your arms, may we accept all children as wonderful gifts from you who have arrived with gifts your world needs. May all children and families experience your blessing and peace. Amen. Tonight I would like to ask you to do one more thing to remember a child and to pray a prayer for them. Maybe your own child or a neighbor's child. It may be your granddaughter or your grandson or one of your grandchildren. It may be a neighbor's child. It may be someone whom you see at church or somewhere else that you go. Or if, if you don't know a child personally, just recall a child's name and pray for a child with that name because somewhere in the world there is a Tom, there is a Susie, there is a Jane, there is a Robert, there is an Ivan, there is, there is a child with any name that you may dream of tonight. Offer a prayer on their behalf, speaking their name, calling their name out to our loving and gracious and kind Heavenly Father. And as we conclude this night, let us remember 
what the Lord requires of us as we go about our living each and every day. To love kindness, to do justice, and to walk humbly with our God. May God now guide you in your way, give you wisdom for each step along the way, each challenge that you confront, and may he hold you in the palm of his hands. God bless you with peace.